Hello, I'm Sister Vasa, and I'm very happy to greet all of you again from Vienna in Austria, this time under much happier circumstances. If you watched our show last week, you know that our set designer, Anka, and her baby, little Francis, were kidnapped. And we spent many sleepless hours last week hoping and praying that the kidnapper, Silkworth, would be caught before he could either hurt Anka or the baby. Now, as those of you who live in Austria already know from the local news, Anka and the baby are safe. And this is all thanks not to the police, but to our Emilios. Yes. You know, I mentioned last week that he jumped on his motorcycle and pursued the kidnapper when the kidnapping happened. And the whole time, Emilios kept a distance so that the kidnapper didn't know that he was being followed. And then, after many hours on the highway, when Silkworth stopped at a remote exit in the middle of the night, Emilios was able to take him by surprise, overpower him, tie him up, and bring him to the police. I can't even describe to you the relief and joy we all felt when Emilios walked through the door with holding baby Francis on one arm and with Anka holding on to his other arm. You know, but come closer. I have to say this so that only you, my viewers, can hear it. I think that all this has brought them closer together because they've been inseparable you know, ever since all this happened. So we'll see what happens between the two of them. But I don't want my crew to hear that I'm gossiping again. But I have to tell you something else, that next week I'll be flying to New York because I'm giving a talk at New Ski Monastery on August 9th. So as much as I hate to leave you again, we will be taking a break. And after New York, I briefly have to go to France on a secret mission. So I don't know exactly when I'll be back again, but I just wanted you to know that I'll be leaving. I'm leaving on a jet plane, don't know when I'll be back again. Oh babe, I hate to go. Today we will be talking about the parents of Mary, the mother of God, Saint Joachim, and his wife, Anna, whose Dormition is celebrated on July 25th. We know about Saints Joachim and Anna, not from the New Testament, but from apocryphal texts like the Proto-Evangelium of James. The word apocryphal means obscure or hidden, and it refers to texts that were excluded from the public use of the church and considered uncanonical because their contents is not entirely in agreement with the accepted teaching of the church. However, although apocryphal texts are not accepted as a whole, some parts, like the story of Joachim and Anna, are useful and considered or authentic parts of the tradition. According to the Proto-Evangelium of James, Joachim was a pious and wealthy Jew in Nazareth who regularly gave to the poor and donated to the synagogue. Saint Anna, also a very pious woman throughout her life, was born in Bethlehem and she moved to Nazareth when she was married to Joachim. Her name, Anna, or Hanna in Hebrew, means grace. Although the couple was very pious, charitable, and wealthy, Joachim and Anna were not respected in the Jewish community because they were childless. In fact, they were often mocked for this reason because childlessness was considered a sign of God's displeasure. Even after they had been married over 50 years and consistently prayed that God grant them children, still they remained childless. This became particularly painful and embarrassing for them when they moved to Jerusalem and Joachim went to the temple to offer a sacrifice, but his sacrifice was rejected by the high priest who said that as a childless man, Joachim was unworthy to offer any gift at the temple. 
Deeply shamed and grieved by these words, both Joachim and Anna took up prayer and fasting in their old age. He withdrew to the wilderness while she prayed in her garden. After much prayer, the archangel Gabriel appeared to both of them separately and promised them a child. When Joachim returned to Jerusalem, Anna came out to meet him at the gates, where the couple embraced, as you see depicted on this icon. They returned home and conceived a child, Mary, the blessed among women, whom they promised to dedicate to the service of the Lord. When Mary turned three, they took her to be raised in the temple, where they would visit her for several years until their death. St. Joachim died first, and St. Anna a couple of years after him. Saints Joachim and Anna experienced public humiliation, or what we today might call discrimination, for most of their lives for something they were powerless to change. But despite this kind of suffering that they endured for many years, they continued to be pious and charitable, meaning they remained strong in their faith and also loving to one another and towards other people. We might also experience some form of humiliation, large or small, from time to time or even constantly, for something we are unable to change. We might experience this individually or as a married couple. For example, the loss of a job and prolonged unemployment. Or perhaps our parents are poor, so we don't have the clothes and things that other kids have, and perhaps sometimes other kids make fun of us because we don't look very cool. Or perhaps we live in a culture that discriminates against us for the color of our skin. Or perhaps we were born with a physical handicap and people treat us differently from others. Or maybe we're single while all our friends are married and we'd like to find someone but this just doesn't happen so we constantly feel left out. Or we're female and we belong to a culture that treats women like children or considers them impure. Or perhaps we're not very good looking or we have pimples all over our face and people somehow disregard us and we feel somehow insufficient. Or perhaps people presume that we're strange because we're Canadian. Whatever the case may be, whether our humiliation is large or small, our large or small suffering might lead us at times to be bitter, aggressive and ungrateful towards God and other people. It might also lead us to self-pity, self-hatred or self-isolation because we don't understand or don't accept how God allows for us to be in this situation. But we can choose to see our situation in a different light and grow through suffering, as did Anna and Joachim. Because beneath the negative surface of any kind of suffering, there is the opportunity for growth. We can actually learn compassion for other people's suffering through our own. We can grow in gratitude for little things we hadn't noticed before. We can also deepen our self-knowledge and increase our capacity for joy. We can also grow in our faith and resilience, as the Apostle Paul writes. We know that suffering produces patience, patience experience, and experience hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. St. Paul wrote these words from experience because he, like Joachim and Anna, and like all men and women of faith yesterday and today, experienced various forms of suffering or cross-bearing, including humiliation, which strengthened them and opened their hearts to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So whatever suffering we might experience today, Let's remember the opportunities that are hidden in any experience of suffering. And let's also remember that we are not alone. Well, that's it for today. St. Joachim and Anna, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.